today I want to bring you a video about my top five books for learning technical analysis. Now, as many of you know, those of you that follow me know that I'm a huge fan of technical analysis, reading the charts, studying the markets, looking for clues, understanding the behaviors behind the prices. But technical analysis, and I will come out and say this up front, is not the end all be all when it comes to trading. Technical analysis is a very important tool, a key element of my trading and understanding when to enter and to exit. But technical analysis, the reason it gets a lot of criticism is because people tend to use it in a very mechanical, very hard, fast way. And I've often said that technical analysis is very much an art as much as it is science because you have to adjust, you have to apply judgment to the charts. The whole point of technical analysis is to help you interpret market behavior. Not to simply look at a chart and say, I see an XYZ pattern or this line, and that's going to happen from here on, right? You have to understand that technical analysis is just another tool. And in fact, when it comes to trading and investing, I would argue that technical analysis is probably the easy part. Once you understand how to read a chart and how to understand price, support, resistance, and some common patterns and, and what they mean in volume and moving averages, then the hard part is really the psychology and the mentality and the money management and managing a trade properly and setting stops and learning when to take profits. And the technical analysis will certainly help you with that, but if you can't execute on it appropriately or if you don't have the self-discipline, then learning how to read charts and understanding indicators and all of that fun stuff is not going to really help you that much because you're going to undermine yourself with some of the other areas. So I would say technical analysis is certainly not 100% and it's probably 30 to 40% of the whole thing in my opinion because psychology and money management are just as important if not more so. so now as many of you know I have a video course that I teach uh, intro to technical analysis in and I've been doing this for probably about 15 years now I've read tons of books probably more than I can remember I've taken seminars I've gone to courses I've done coaching with other top traders investors um, and there's just a lot of different ways to learn this and a lot of different ways that to make sense some some people like to learn from audio some people like to see video some people like to read books and I would just recommend doing a little bit of everything because you get a different perspective with each method now I will be upfront and say that reading the books is probably the slowest and uh, most tedious way to do it because uh, I mean let's be honest some of these books are not exactly thrillers and you're not reading uh, some really exciting material and uh, some of these books that I'm going to recommend are really more good reference guides and uh, things that you can go back to from time to time and I've read several of these more than once and uh, certainly use them uh, as a guide very often so first on the list how to make money in stocks by William O'Neill wait a minute I thought we were talking about cryptocurrency here we are we're talking about technical analysis and William O'Neill is very big on technical analysis and if you're familiar with investors business daily their publications and their website are just full of charts and they talk about support and resistance and patterns and breakouts and that's why I love it. Um, he came up with a system called the Canceling method which is very much about the fundamental aspects of a stock so current earnings and annual and all that stuff but the book is very heavy technical analysis wise so I would definitely recommend it even if you're not investing in stocks and you don't care to learn about earnings and earnings per share and profit margin and all that you can skip it and you'll still get a lot out of the book from just reading the charts and understanding why they made certain trades and uh, the first part of the book is just full of charts and he teaches a lot of the most common patterns cup and handle double tops double bottoms inverted head and shoulders uh, as well as understanding the general market cycles bull and bear markets and how to avoid the big bears um, it's a pretty good book it's a big reference book but if you want to 
get the streamlined version as I like to call it. The successful investor is uh, very much like the mini version of that book. Another one I would look at is how to make money selling stocks short. Even if you're not gonna be shorting, whether it's stocks or cryptos or any other type of trading markets, understanding how to spot a top is a key element because if you can avoid those big bear markets, you're gonna be way ahead of the crowd. And so that's what I recommend. But number one on the list is how to make money in stocks by William O'Neill. Next is volume price analysis by Anna Kooling. And I'm a huge believer in volume. If I had to have just one other indicator other than price and I could only pick one, hands down, it would be volume. Volume is of such important when trading in the markets because it gives you clues as to how strong a move is and whether you're turning around when there's a reversal or a big top or a bottom volume is very significant and after you learn the basics of techno analysis patterns and how to read a chart i would certainly dive deeper into the volume price analysis of that aspect now be aware that this is a uh, a little bit more for more liquid markets right so something that just trades a lot and a lot of these books are written for stocks and they trade you know millions upon millions a day per share and just high volume type of thing so in cryptocurrency oftentimes you're trading an altcoin that is smaller in volume and daily trading volumes and so when you look at volume price analysis it can be a little bit skewed now for something huge like bitcoin that just trades huge volumes on a daily basis or ethereum it certainly will help you something that's very new smaller market cap just be aware that uh, some of the things you see for example if you see a long wick at the top of a candle generally speaking that's a reversal but on smaller altcoins i've noticed you see that very often and it's really not a significant signal so just keep in mind for this is lends itself better for larger more liquid trading next on the list japanese candlestick charting now if you've seen any of my videos i generally will show candlestick charts now i know a lot of professional and well established traders that don't use candlesticks and they only use bar charts and they swear by it and they would rather not use candlesticks and it's it's a preference for sure but more often than not you're going to see candlesticks in charts it's very common and so understanding some of the key candlestick patterns and some of the biggies now this book goes into a lot of detail and in fact he has several books so i would recommend looking into all, a lot of those uh, along the same lines here with candlestick charting, but understanding what some of the other traders are looking at, especially when it comes to big reversal bars, is definitely going to help. So understanding how to read candlesticks will certainly help, but just be aware that candlestick charting is not a standalone guide. You can't just look at the candlestick by itself uh, in isolation and say, I see this pattern, so this is going to happen. You got to factor in other things like volume um, and then like i said at the beginning the general context of the market right what is the general situation why might have a candlestick appeared so it's it's a good tool to help you interpret but if you use it in isolation and just go based strictly on the candlesticks uh, you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble that way now again just like volume Candlestick charting works very good in the more liquid names, the bigger, more established markets, and, uh, and it's a lot less reliable in newer illiquid markets because they're just easier to move and uh, easier to influence with larger buys and, and those that can swing the market a little bit more. Number four, technical analysis of the financial markets by John Murphy. Now, this is starting to get a little bit more in the advanced to intermediate level and it is going to start to feel more a uh, textbook type of feel but it's a very good resource and he goes into a lot more than just technical analysis which makes his book great he talks about money management talks about trading psychology but he certainly covers the basis in terms of charts support resistance patterns and why you're seeing certain things show up in the chart and so highly recommend this book one that I like to use as a reference from time to time. 
And finally, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. The author of this book, Thomas Bukowski, has other books, really good books, and I would recommend looking into them. But this book truly is that. It is the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. Very comprehensive. Certainly feels like a textbook, but it's a good guide. And he doesn't just go into the chart patterns and how they look, but he explains why they set up the way they do, as well as how reliable each pattern is. And there's certain ones that are just more reliable and the percent gains are larger versus the other ones. And so it's just a really good, very detailed, comprehensive book. Now, it's not one of the cheaper books. It's, uh, I believe you, you can buy this book for like 70 or $80. Um, and most of these books, they have the Kindle version as well. Um, and some of them look okay on the Kindle, like how to make money in stocks and some of these other ones, but um, like volume price analysis, I would just recommend getting the paperback version of those. A lot of those, the charts are black and white and not that good to begin with. And on the Kindle one, they just get a little distorted. So uh, my preference is just getting the hard copies of these books. Now, some notable mentions. Technical Analysis Explained by Martin Pring. It's a 1980s classic, but uh, still often referred to. And Charting and Technical Analysis by Fred McAllen. Again, another good, simple uh, kind of starting off book. Stan Weinstein's Secret for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets. This book has so many nuggets of gold and wisdom in it. I just wish it was updated. The charts in the book sometimes can be a little hard to read, and it's very st- stock centric so you have to factor out some of the you know the earnings gap ups and some of the things that just really don't apply to cryptocurrency and a lot of the times when you're trading stocks they're looking at things in terms of weeks versus cryptos we look at things in hours and days Um, and so you have to just kind of factor that down a little bit but the whole concept around the moving averages and the support and resistance is in this book and so it still applies Um, And then technical analysis for dummies. I've heard a lot of good reviews of this. Um, I'm not a fan of how they laid it out, but it certainly covers all the bases. And I'm not against the the four dummies books because they do have a lot of good ones out there. So just one to consider if you're just getting started. Um, A lot of people like their style and their way of presenting the material. And so certainly consider that one. And now I mentioned technical analysis isn't everything you have to factor in the psychology and the market context and you have to manage your trade and learn when to take profit and when to take your losses and so there's some good books that i would recommend reading along those lines trading in the zone how i made two million dollars in the stock market and market wizards Um, these are just classics that anyone investing or trading should read or listen to on the audio version just Find a way to get the, get a hold of these. These are just classic books that have a lot of nuggets of wisdom that go beyond just reading the charts. And finally, noteinvestor.com slash training. I do offer a video course for those that are interested. Now, it's not a book. This is a uh, three and a half hours of video. If you want to learn more there, for those that are not familiar, noteinvestor.com slash training. So I hope this list of books helps you over time. Just Start picking them up little by little. Certainly these are books you want to take in in small doses over time. You don't want to just kind of cram. It's going to be very tedious, but you definitely want to start learning and uh, deepening your knowledge. So if you're looking for a way to get started, those are my top picks. I appreciate you guys watching. It's going to be it for now. Until next time, take care. Reversal bars is definitely going to help you. So understanding how to read candlesticks will certainly help, but just be aware that candlestick charting is not a standalone guide. You can't just look at the candlestick by itself uh, in isolation and say, I see this pattern, so this is going to happen. you got to factor in other things like volume. um, And then, like I said at the beginning, the general context of the market, right? What is the general situation? Why might have a candlestick appeared? So it's, it's a good tool to help you interpret, but if you use it in isolation and just go based strictly on the candlesticks, uh, you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble that way. Now, again, just like volume, candlestick charting works very good in the more liquid names, the bigger, more established markets, and uh, 
and it's a lot less reliable in newer illiquid markets because they're just easier to move and uh, easier to influence with larger buys and, and those that can swing the market a little bit more. Number four, technical analysis of the financial markets by John Murphy. Now this is starting to get a little bit more in the advanced to intermediate level and it is going to start to feel more a uh, textbook type of feel but it's a very good resource and he goes into a lot more than just technical analysis which makes his book great he talks about money management talks about trading psychology but he certainly covers the basis in terms of charts support resistance patterns and why you're seeing certain things show up in the chart and so highly recommend this book one that I like to use as a reference from time to time. And finally, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. The author of this book, Thomas Bukowski, has other books, really good books, and I would recommend looking into them, but this book truly is that. It is the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. Very comprehensive, certainly feels like a textbook, but it's a good guide, and he doesn't just go into the chart patterns and how they look but he explains why they set up the way they do as well as how reliable each pattern is and there's certain ones that are just more reliable and the percent gains are larger versus the other ones and so it's just a really good very detailed comprehensive book now it's not one of the cheaper books it's uh i believe you, you can buy this book for like 70 or 80 dollars um, and most of these books they have the Kindle version as well, um, and some of them look okay on the Kindle, like How to Make Money in Stocks and some of these other ones, but um, like Volume Price Analysis, I would just recommend getting the paperback version of those. A lot of those, the charts are black and white and not that good to begin with, and on the Kindle one, they just get a little distorted. So uh, my preference is just will show candlestick charts. Now, I know a lot of professional and well established traders that don't use candlesticks and they only use bar charts and they swear by it and they would rather not use candlesticks and it's it's a preference for sure but more often than not you're going to see candlesticks in charts it's very common and so understanding some of the key candlestick patterns and some of the biggies now this book goes into a lot of detail and in fact he has several books so i would recommend looking into all, a lot of those uh, along the same lines here with candlestick charting, but understanding what some of the other traders are looking at, especially when it comes to big reversal bars, is definitely going to help. So understanding how to read candlesticks will certainly help, but just be aware that candlestick charting is not a standalone guide. You can't just look at the candlestick by itself uh, in isolation and say, I see this pattern, so this is going to happen. You got to factor in other things like volume um, and then like i said at the beginning the general context of the market right what is the general situation why might have a candlestick appeared so it's it's a good tool to help you interpret but if you use it in isolation and just go based strictly on the candlesticks uh, you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble that way now again just like volume Candlestick charting works very good in the more liquid names, the bigger, more established markets, and, uh, and it's a lot less reliable in newer illiquid markets because they're just easier to move and uh, easier to influence with larger buys and, and those that can swing the market a little bit more. Number four, technical analysis of the financial markets by John Murphy. Now, this is starting to get a little bit more in the advanced to intermediate level, and it is going to start to feel more a uh, textbook type of feel but it's a very good resource and he goes into a lot more than just technical analysis which makes his book great he talks about money management talks about trading psychology but he certainly covers the basis in terms of charts support resistance patterns and why you're seeing certain things show up in the chart and so highly recommend this book one that I like to use as a reference from time to time. And finally, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. The author of this book, Thomas Bukowski, has other books, really good books, and I would recommend looking into them, but this book truly is that. It is the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. Very comprehensive, certainly feels like a textbook, but it's a good guide, 
And he doesn't just go into the chart patterns and how they look, but he explains why they definitely going to help you. So understanding how to read candlesticks will certainly help, but just be aware that candlestick charting is not a standalone guide. You can't just look at the candlestick by itself uh, in isolation and say, I see this pattern, so this is going to happen. You got to factor in other things like volume. Um, and then, like I said at the beginning, the general context of the market, right? What is the general situation? Why might have a candlestick appeared? So it's, it's a good tool to help you interpret. But if you use it in isolation and just go based strictly on the candlesticks, uh, you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble that way. Now, again, just like volume, candlestick charting works very good in the more liquid names, the bigger, more established markets. And, uh, and it's a lot less reliable in newer illiquid markets because they're just easier to move and uh, easier to influence with larger buys and, and those that can swing the market a little bit more. Number four, technical analysis of the financial markets by John Murphy. Now, this is starting to get a little bit more in the advanced to intermediate level, and it is going to start to feel more a uh, textbook type of feel, but it's a very good resource, and he goes into a lot more than just technical analysis, which makes his book great. He talks about money management, talks about trading psychology, but he certainly covers the basis in terms of charts, support, resistance, patterns, and why you're seeing certain things show up in the chart. And so highly recommend this book, one that I like to use as a reference from time to time. And finally, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. The author of this book, Thomas Bukowski, has other books, really good books, and I would recommend looking into them, but this book truly is that. It is the encyclopedia of chart patterns. Very comprehensive. Certainly feels like a textbook, but it's a good guide, and he doesn't just go into the chart patterns and how they look, but he explains why they set up the way they do, as well as how reliable each pattern is and there's certain ones that are just more reliable and the percent gains are larger versus the other ones and so it's just a really good very detailed comprehensive book now it's not one of the cheaper books it's uh i believe you, you can buy this book for like 70 or 80 dollars um, and most of these books they have the kindle version as well um, and some of them look okay on the kindle like how to make money in stocks and some of these other ones but um, like volume price analysis, I would just recommend getting the paperback version of those. A lot of those, the charts are black and white and not that good to begin with. And on the Kindle one, they just get a little distorted. So uh, my preference is just getting the hard copies of these. And uh, the first part of the book is just full of charts. And he teaches a lot of the most common patterns, cup and handle, double tops, double bottoms, inverted head and shoulders, uh, as well as understanding the general market cycles bull and bear markets and how to avoid the big bears um, it's a pretty good book it's a big reference book but if you want to get the streamlined version as i like to call it the successful investor is uh, very much like the mini version of that book another one i would look at is how to make money selling stocks short even if you're not going to be shorting whether it's stocks or cryptos or any other type of trading markets understanding how to spot a top is a key element because if you can avoid those big bear markets you're going to be way ahead of the crowd and so that's what i recommend but number one on the list is how to make money in stocks by william o'neill next is volume price analysis by anna cooling and i'm a huge believer in volume if i had to have just one other indicator other than price and i could only pick one hands down it would be volume Volume is of such important when trading in the markets because it gives you clues as to how strong a move is and whether you're turning around, whether there's a reversal or a big top or a bottom, volume is very significant. And after you learn the basics of technical analysis, patterns, and how to read a chart, I would certainly dive deeper into the volume price analysis of that aspect. Now, be aware that this is a, uh, a little bit more for more liquid markets right so something that just trades a lot and a lot of these books are written for stocks and they trade 
you know, millions upon millions a day per share and just high volume type of thing. So in cryptocurrency, oftentimes you're trading an altcoin that is smaller in volume and daily trading volumes. And so when you look at volume price analysis, it can be a little bit skewed. Now for something huge like Bitcoin that just trades huge volumes on a daily basis or Ethereum, it certainly will help you. Something that's very new, smaller market cap, just be aware that uh, some of the things you see, for example, if you see a long wick at the top of a candle, generally speaking, that's a reversal. But on smaller altcoins, I've noticed you see that very often and it's really not a significant signal. So just keep in mind for this is lends itself better for larger, more liquid trading. Next on the list, Japanese candlestick charting. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, I generally will show candlestick charts. Now, I know a lot of professional and well-established traders that don't use candlesticks, and 